Um, hello, everybody. Thank you for coming. So we are First Phosphate. We are igneous phosphate for the lithium iron phosphate battery industry. Nothing to do with fertilizer. Igneous phosphate, uh, high purity, um, just for lithium iron phosphate batteries. Uh, lithium iron phosphate batteries, as you can see, uh, there are now over 60% of the world's global battery production. Uh, there's a steep uh, demand curve coming for them. And uh, the, the industry is, is, is growing leaps and bounds, and they've now taken over as, as the lead chemistry above and beyond uh, nickel, manganese, cobalt chemistry. Uh, when we look at electrification and what is needed for electrification, if you look on the left, uh, this was done by Benchmark Minerals. Uh, copper is the biggest uh, element required for electrification. But if you look at number two, uh, it's not only phosphate, but it's purified phosphoric acid. And they're predicting that we need 33 new purified phosphoric acid plants to meet this demand by 2030. And guess how many we've been able to produce in the Western world in the last 70 years? Well, only five of them. So um, there, you know, there's going to be a massive need for purified phosphoric acid that goes into making these LFP batteries, lithium iron phosphate batteries. If you look on the right, you can see the pale blue line. That's a supply of purified phosphoric acid to 2045. As you can see, they don't see that budging. And the reason for that is because current purified phosphoric acid um, is made mostly on the back of, uh, of, of um, sedimentary phosphate rock, which is used for fertilizer. And only the purest, purest uh, part of that production goes into purified phosphoric acid, while as the rest remains in the fertilizer industry. So it's really hard to uh, expand the amount of purified phosphoric acid out there without expanding the amount of fertilizer, and fertilizer is already at max. So you need something that a new rock, a new rock that can be converted 100% into purified phosphoric acid without touching the fertilizer industry. And that's exactly what we have here at First Phosphate with this uh, ultra pure uh, igneous phosphate rock. If you look at still on, at the uh, graphic on the right, you can see that traditional uses for phosphoric acid, which are out there, things like you know, Coca-Cola, uh, some cleaning agents, um, fire extinguishers, water purification, uh, baked goods, um, uh, cosmetics, pharmaceuticals, all of those need uh, purified phosphoric acid. And we're already pretty much at, uh, at capacity. Um, but we're gonna need, uh, from what uh, CRU group is saying, double the amount of purified phosphoric acid in the West. But if you follow what Benchmark is saying on the left, we might need like, you know, eight times the amount of purified phosphoric acid in the West. And so how do we do that? Well, on our next slide here, there's only one way to do it, and that's with igneous phosphate rock. If you look on the left, the igneous phosphate rock converts almost 100% into purified phosphoric acid to make LFP batteries. It's clean. Uh, the gypsum that's left behind from that process uh, can be uh, molded into uh, plaster and uh, modular construction units. Whereas the sedimentary rock on the right, as you can see, it's mostly uh, lower purity. It's, a, it's from sediments, uh, not trapped in, in the magma like the igneous rock. And uh, you know, it creates a lot of gypsum slag piles. And most of it is, is so impure that it, it's good for, uh, for fertilizer fields, but not too much of it can go into LFP battery. So the secret to making a lot of purified phosphoric acid that we're going to be needing for the LFP battery industry is really this ultra pure igneous rock. Okay, so let's talk about igneous rock. So how rare is it? It's extremely rare. You could think of it as a rare earth in a sense. Um, it is uh, about 5% of the world's phosphate, the known reserves, is igneous rock. 95% uh, of the world's phosphate is those red dots that you see on the left uh, th uh, on the world. Those are uh, sedimentary phosphate deposits. Then the 5% of igneous phosphate deposits, while well, you have a little bit up in the north of Europe, uh, mostly in Russia right now, which are behind sanctions. Uh, those are carbonatites. Then you have some in Southern Africa, they're very inaccessible. Um, and then you have some in, if you see the Southern part of Brazil, you see some blue dots there. Um, that's got a lot of rare earths in it, that, those carbonatites. So um, that goes into the fertilizer industry, but only there in Quebec, if you see uh, where, the, uh, where the dot is for first phosphate, we have these, this igneous anorthosite rock. This igneous anorthosite rock is so pure um, that, like I said, it turns into 100% purified phosphoric acid. It's extremely rare. Uh, we get it up to a concentration of almost 41% P2O5, which is phosphate, and then it converts almost 100% into purified phosphoric acid. So a very strategic resource here, something that's very rare. Igneous anorthosite rock is only 1% of the world's phosphate, and we have it right here in North America. What's wonderful about uh, this deposit is if uh, you look here um, where I'm showing the, the, the map of the deposit, it's about 2.5 kilometers long. It's 300 meters wide, and we've only gone down 300 meters. Um, these types of mines in Russia can go down up to 1.5 kilometers. 
Um, so we have a, a long way to go, but just with what you see there, which we've already been able to um, uh, qualify into purified phosphoric acid, if you look on the right, and that was done with the world's largest producer of uh, purified phosphoric acid, Prion, our Belgium, our partner. Um, with what you see on the screen right now, we have enough for 350 gigawatt hours of LFP batteries, um, and we have enough for 23 years. Now, what is that in terms of uh, something that we can compare it to? Well, let's think of all the automobiles that are produced uh, in North America per annum. That's between Canada, USA, and Mexico. That's 12 million automobiles that are produced per annum. Well, this deposit can supply half of those vehicles, 6 million per annum. Uh, with the batteries that they need for the next 23 years. And that's just with what you see. We know that going lower, this deposit can, can go above uh, 40 to 50 years. What's excellent is that this deposit has an NPV of 2.1 billion, an IRR of 37%, uh, uh, a 2.9 year payback. And uh, this is at the lower end of the, of the price for igneous phosphate. It, it only goes up from there. The other important thing to note is that the mineral mineralization starts at surface. This is an open pit mine, and we're sitting at one kilometer from paved highway. We're sitting uh, right in, in the municip municipal area, uh, right in the middle of, of, of two towns that are all for the development. Both mayors are in support of the development. And we are sitting at 70, 70 kilometers from the deep sea port of Saguenay, uh, which allows us you know, easy access um, to the world from that port. So extremely strategic resource, a great resource. Um, and uh, is sitting at 70 kilometers from the deep sea port. And just to show you a little bit uh, better here, you can see it. If you see where it says deep sea port, um, and if you see up uh, above that, it says Beijing La Marche phosphate. So that's that's that that shows you the distance, the 70 kilometers driving distance to the airport. Uh, sorry, to the uh, deep sea port. We're sitting right beside the NATO base as well. Uh, this is a very strategic area of North America uh, because Rio Tinto's got their installations there for making aluminum. Uh, with all the hydroelectric dams in the area. And we also have a very large forestry industry in that area. But both are com coming under, under pressure for various reasons. So that leaves a, you know, a great area with a lot of skilled workforce, a lot of skilled uh, equipment suppliers, um, all in need of diversification. So this is really a sunrise industry uh, for this uh, region of Quebec. Um, so, you know, we're, we're going to be active on three levels. If you see the first two blocks, that's extraction and concentration that happens at the mine site. The next one uh, is, a, you know, con conversion into purified phosphoric acid. Uh, that will be happening at the port of Saguenay. And then after that, it's uh, production of LFP cathode active material, which will also be happening at the port of Saguenay. We're starting a small uh, introductory plant at La Baie, Quebec, not too far from the port at this moment. And also, um, you know, at the Port of Saguenay is where our offtakes will be taking place. So far, we have definitive offtake on 25% of the mine. We do not want to sell off more than 25% of the mine. Uh, the rest of the, uh, the concentrate uh, remains for us for making uh, the phosphoric acid at the Port of Saguenay. And that phosphoric acid is about 20% uh, uh, offtake, and the rest we will uh, keep for ourselves to be able to transfer into making LFP cathode active material. Um, what we've done is something that's truly unique in this industry. If you see what I'm holding here in front of me, this is a the, the, one of the first uh, LFP batteries produced in North America from uh, fully from uh, North American critical minerals. We've used the uh, six-step process that you see on screen. Um, step one is the igneous anorthosite rock um, from Saguenay, Quebec, which I just showed you. We've converted that into uh, phosphate concentrate at 41% P2O5. And then that concentrate was then converted into uh, purified phosphoric acid. That's step three that you see on the screen. And then step four, uh, with uh, uh, iron powder that was provided to us by GK and Hoganus, our partner out of Tennessee, um, who, by the way, took a secondary recovery of magnetite and made the iron powder for us with, with their scrap metal making process. We made the iron phosphate. Iron phosphate is a precursor. It's basically purified phosphoric acid plus iron powder makes iron phosphate. And then iron phosphate, we mix that with lithium in step five, and we got lithium iron phosphate cathode active material. That's the holy grail. And then that is then uh, put into uh, the batteries together with um, uh, graphite. The graphite was taken from Nouveau Monde Graphite that some of you might know. And we made, you know, I think the world's first uh, LFP battery cells, uh, a full North American uh, critical mineral material. This, this is really something exceptional. As you know, um, there's been uh, the, 
the ongoing squabbles between uh, um, USA and China over supply chains. Um, China has threatened uh, just the other day to cut off uh, supply chains of uh, rare earths, uh, semiconductors, and also LFP uh, components. And that's supposed to go into place on November 1st. And as you know, that created a, a big reaction in the market. Um, and everybody's looking for, you know, North American supply chain. Well, well here we have it. Uh, this little company out of, out of uh, Quebec has created the world's first LFP uh, battery cells, a fully, uh, you know, uh, landed onshored uh, supply chain for LFP battery um, with North American critical minerals. Now, we've only done this with 150, uh, making only 150 commercial battery cells, but those battery cells were tested. They were cycled uh, 2,000 times and they performed well throughout the, the entire test, which means they are of, of full commercial grade. It's really, really interesting that, you know, using uh, critical minerals um, that are sitting, you know, only in, you know, pilot scale, right down the supply chain, we were able to produce these, these, these LFP battery cells. And then when we tested them, they tested at full commercial scale. So basically that validates all the products um, that have gone into making these battery cells of which, you know, our um, phosphate and our iron powder. So extremely big development for North America here, the ability to land and onshore this LFP battery supply chain. As you know, LFP battery uh, was in invented in North America uh, about the year 2000, 2001. It was quickly lost uh, to China, the technology. And so for the first time here with what you see on screen, we have, we have, you know, we have, we have brought these back. And again, I, sh I show the battery, the LFP batteries that we've been able to create a very, very big uh, step here in terms of localizing the supply chain. I believe the only company in North America that uh, has been able to do this with full critical, uh, full North American critical minerals. Okay, so we've uh, de-risked the project through major relationships. Obviously, Prayon, I talked about them before, the world's largest producer of phosphoric acid out of Belgium. Um, American battery factory out of the southern United States is looking for LFP cathode active material offtake. We have Exim Bank at the table to provide financing. We have a division of uh, Glencore at the table to provide sulfuric acid. Uh, we have a full uh, 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 collaboration agreement with our local indigenous group. We have the Quebec uh, uh, government uh, interested as well in the project, interested in, in the uh, you know in the capital deployment project once we're past uh, permitting, and we have GK and Hogan as the world's largest atomizer of steel powder as a strategic partner as well out of Tennessee, and then a whole host of other local and, and international um, uh, providers and partners. Uh, we're a management team that meets and beats milestones. Um, right now, our, our biggest uh, uh, project is obviously moving through the feasibility study. Uh, we are just uh, finishing up on our definition drilling. We're finishing up on our environmentals, finishing up on our larger metallurgical sample and pilot plants. And uh, ne next year, we're, we're planning to go through uh, the feasibility study and hopefully to have that ready by end of 2026 with permitting in place by 2027. That is a very aggressive timeline. We're pretty much fully funded for most of it. We have $20 million uh, in the bank. And uh, so we uh, we will be progressing down that that path uh, quite aggressively. We just launched a thirty thousand meter drill program uh, to fully define uh, the resource to be able to begin that feasibility study. Uh, share structure is very tight. Um, you know, it's it's uh, management and board owns about twenty five percent of the shares. Um, our friends uh, and family have another forty percent. Our First Nation has one uh, percent, and then the public floats about 35 percent. Uh, there's been $40 million uh, invested into the company to date. Um, that's all been raised uh, by uh, the management in non-brokered private placements. We have never had any, uh, any underwriters involved at all. We're quite proud of that. We've been able to uh, uh, nurture the capital, make sure that the, the capital coming in is, is the proper capital. I can tell you that I know about 99% uh, of, of all ho holders um, uh, that have uh, that have come into financings, and uh, I've spoken to almost everybody who's come into a financing. Um, so it remains, you know, it remains a family of shareholders. We have no debt, um, and we plan to keep it that way. We plan to get uh, through to permitting uh, debt debt free if we can. Obviously, um, you know, we're 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 quite well financed now. We have twenty million dollars in the bank, and that should see us through at least to the end of uh, twenty twenty six. Uh, if we're looking to raise capital, I know everyone asks, it'll be only very opportunistically, and it'll only be to very clean, uh, long-term shareholders um, who see the benefits of what we're doing and want to build out this uh, uh, LFP battery supply chain for North America and, and see that you know the value of that once that's built. And we've been building aggressively here for the past three years. Um, 
you know, our management and our board is cross-functional. I just I wanted to reiterate, you know, we are we are half a technology company and we're half a mining company and we're a fully integrated supply chain when you put those two elements together. And that's what we're aiming for. We're aiming to go from mine to market from um, uh, um, the cathode active material. And for that, we've got a very um, um, multifaceted management team that has been in, in mining, finance, technology, and uh, other disciplines as well. Uh, the last thing that I'll leave you with here is LFP battery. When, when everyone's thinking about uh, electric uh, electrification, everyone was always thinking EVs, and everyone always thinks, well, the, the current administration in the U.S. is against EVs. Well, that might be the case, but even if it were the case, um, if you look at the, the, the tranche on that pie, the, the red one, 7.1%, that's all that EVs represents to LFP. LFP is just so much more, um, especially with, you know, the big, big deployment of data centers that's coming. You know, you hear some of these the, these announcements of data centers uh, down in Louisiana, Texas, other places that, you know, one of them could be as, as, as big as, you know, all of Manhattan in terms of, you know, the, the, uh, the space that it will take up. But we got to start thinking, like, what's going to be in there? So there's going to be a lot of computers. All those data centers, they need a constant supply of power and they need they have to have constant power as well. And all of that is based on LFP battery. So when you look at that big 60.7% tranche of LFP, the big blue one on the on the on the screen, that's all energy storage. That's all you know, you know, data centers. It's all these batteries for robotics, automation, everything that's coming here to North America in terms of onshoring um, all of this, all of these supply chains. LFP battery is going to be crucial to that. And this is the reason why China comes back and says, "Hey, you know, we're upset at you. We're going to cut off uh, rare earths, uh, that supply chain." Uh, we're going to come up, cut off the semiconductor supply chain, but nobody listens to the third. They say, we're going to cut off the LFP battery supply chain. It's time that we start listening, and people have started listening. Um, there's not a lot of plays out there in, in North America that have this LFP battery supply chain wrapped up end-to-end. -end. I believe that first phosphate is the only one. There's very few uh, stocks that uh, you can get involved in if you're interested in that third element that China is threatening, which is LFP technology. And first phosphate is one of them. We go end to end uh, from the mine all the way to, um, to the finished product. So think about that when you're thinking about LFP battery. Think that, you know, it's just 7% is EVs. We're not even really interested too much in that sector as a company. We're really interested in the data centers, the energy storage, um, small devices, uh, the military devices, drones, uh, wheelchairs. Uh, scientific uh, instrumentation, uh, automation, uh, robotics. And the other thing I wanted to leave you with is just think about all the companies out there that are in lithium. Uh, maybe there's 300 choices of lithium companies between all the companies that are listed on the, all the major exchanges. But how many companies are really out there in phosphate, and, and especially in this high purity phosphate and with a specific focus on LFP battery? I believe we might be with the only company out there. And it's LFP, it's lithium iron phosphate. So the lithium is going to be out there. The iron, we know we can get it. We certainly have access ourselves to um, you know, iron powder through GK and Hoganus. But where do you get the P? Where do you get the phosphate? And where do you get this high purity phosphate without having to touch the, uh, the fertilizer world and just going directly into purified phosphoric acid, the holy grail, to make you know, these LFP batteries right here that, that we've been able to make as a team here at First Phosphate? That's what really excites me as a CEO. And that's why, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm so dedicated to this company and I've invested, uh, you know, um, about $2 million of my own money into it. And um, I, I get paid fully in shares, just like most of our management team. We still believe in this project. We've got a well-curated uh, capital table of good friends and family. And we're just here to build this into a real success story uh, for North America and to onshore that third critical uh, piece that China's threatening, right? The LFP battery supply chain. So let's not just listen to rare earths and semiconductors, but let's listen to what China's saying about LFP battery. We got it. We're here. We're here to onshore it from, from mine to market. So thank you very much, everybody, for listening. I really appreciate it. Um, I've got to run now, but if there's any questions, if you could kindly just uh, put them into the chat box, um, they're all going to be accumulated. And what I'll do is um, I'll answer, I promise I'll answer everybody uh, one by one personally at the end of this uh, at the end of this day when I have a little bit of uh, more time to do so. Thank you very much again. All the best.